thank you for the presentation. So we have time for Q and A. Uh, before we do that, I would like to acknowledge um, uh, the authors uh, of this uh, paper, um, uh, Philip Nade, um, uh, Saiket Guhar, and Don Towsley, uh, the co-authors of this paper just presented. Uh, and um, so um, I was, as I said, you know, I think we have two options. If you have questions, you can just turn on your mic, raise your hand, you know, on 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 the um, WebEx um, uh, um, platform here, or you can um, describe your questions uh, using Slack. So either way is fine. Anyone? Yeah, uh, Giacomo raised his hand, so I think uh, Giacomo, yeah, open your mind. Thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you for the presentation. I have a, a more of a kind of a curiosity. Uh, in your uh, in your presentation, you show that the number of qubits stored is uh, generally very low, which means that uh, this beta parameter is. Uh, not very close to one. Uh, are there some conditions in which the beta becomes close to one or uh, uh, the system uh, prevents that? Thank you, that's a very excellent question. So um, in this paper, we don't really um, see such a scenario because uh, I believe it's because what we are studying here is a homogeneous system where the links are identical. And in such cases, we don't see um, the number of qubits really becoming very high. Um, in the continuous time Markov chain model of, of um, the same example, um, the quantum switch, which we presented um, last year at the MAMA workshop, um, you can find, um, I believe we have some plots there, but if not, I have an archive paper where um, there are plots where um, we have a heterogeneous system where the switch um, is serving users that are not equidistant from the switch, meaning the link lengths are different. And also, especially in the cases where the system is operating close to the stability region, um, that's a case where we can see the number of stored qubits really shoot up um, during, in, in that barely, barely stable region. But um, that's, again, using the continuous time mark of chain, and um, we don't have analysis for discrete time mark of chain. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Next question. Can I ask um, a na relatively naive question? Uh, the first part of your talk, you mentioned uh, the, the loss in the um, fiber link is uh, exponentially decay. And I feel a little bit disconnected from, from that physical understanding to the uh, to your probability of entanglement and things like that. So there must be a mapping. Do you make kind of an implicit assumption that all the users are kind of having same distance in terms of fiber in order to have the kind of homogeneous uh, scenario? Uh, yes, in this work, we do assume that all the links are identical, and that's because it makes the analysis of the discrete time mark of chain much simpler. Um, but this assumption is relaxed when we look at the continuous time mark of chain. Um, and the reason why we have this exponential degradation is really just because of how quantum states are transported. It's different than how classical data is transported across fiber. Um, mm -hmm. So, so you 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 handle it by changing from discrete time to continuous time Markov chain. Yeah. So, in order to analyze more interesting scenarios where the links are different, or where um, there's decoherence, or where the buffer sizes are finite, mm -hmm. um, yeah. we use continuous time Markov chains. And so, in this paper, we just do a comparison of that prior work. Um, that was the discrepancy that you saw near the end of the talk. The, for the expected number of stored qubits in steady state. So we did see some discrepancy there. Yep. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Okay.
Any any other question? Let me see the Slack uh, channel. I I don't see any. Um, can, can I can I add just a, a very quick, uh, more of a curiosity than a question? Uh, in, in your paper, you show that the capacity grows uh, linearly with the number of users. So uh, this means that uh, this switch uh, is not really the bottleneck of the full C of the full network of switches. Okay, uh, what would be a bottleneck? So what what is uh, the limit the the parameter or the device that limits uh, your capacity? I think there are two main bottlenecks. And those are the other parameters in the numerator of that expression. And so one of them is P, the probability of successfully generating a bell pair at the link level. So how successfully are you able to generate entanglement at the link level between the switch and uh, any user? Um, and then the other parameter would be Q, which is the successful, um, the probability of successfully performing a swapping operation to actually provide end-to-end -end entanglement between two users. So those would be the two bottlenecks. Does that answer the question? Uh, yes, definitely, yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Um, I guess uh, for sake of time, uh, if I may, uh, I would um, uh, suggest uh, any further questions to um, uh, the authors, uh, um, either stay in the breakout sessions or some other way to contact them to ask them. And let's move on to the second paper. Of